chapter number 1 from verse 5, and we shall be opening a lot of scriptures as well. So, I hope and believe you are there now. I shall start reading. There was, in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abia, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and their name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. And they had no child, because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken here. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And as the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense, and there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zachariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. And he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and ye shall be filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. And men of the children of Israel shall turn to the Lord their God. And ye shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zachariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife was stricken in years. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb, and not be able to speak unto the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believe not my words. We shall be fulfilled in their season. And the people waited for Zacharias as he marv and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them, and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. And it came to pass that as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own house. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, Thus has the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a seed of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. You finish the chapter because it's so long in your own time. But I'm speaking to you under the theme and the title, The Record Breaker. Thus says the Lord God of Israel. This year, 2021, there is grace to break records. Every record that has been sent in the Olympics over the past two decades going further down this century, the 20th century, has been broken. Carl Lewis set a record. Maurice Green broke the record. Then Justin Gatlin broke Maurice Green's record. And um, uh, Tyson Gay broke Gatlin's record. And then Asafa Powell came broke their records. But alas, Usain Bolt came and blew their records off. Records are meant to be broken. Just a few days ago, Pelé, the great football legend, he had his 
record broken by Cristiano Ronaldo. And I can go on and on and on, but records are said to be broken. And I want to tell you that there is grace for you to break your father's record, your mother's record, your grandparents' record, and your, all your ancestors' record. You have the grace to break every record that was set in your bloodline, and you have the grace to break every record that was set in your neighborhood, in your place of origin, in your village of origin. You are being anointed to break records. Every record set in your country, it can be broken, and there is grace for it right now. So, in this grace of the record breaker coming to you now, there is a beginning of a new covenant called the New Testament. And as the New Testament begins, there is a priest called Zacharias. Zacharias is um, a priest, meaning he's from the tribe of Aaron. He's a Levite. And he's also married to a woman called Elizabeth, who is also from the tribe of Aaron. The Bible didn't state that Zacharias is from the tribe of Aaron because the writer Luke assumed that we are sens sensible enough to correlate the specifications and the stipulations of the priesthood office as for being to emanate from the Aaronic priesthood lineage only. So it was quite obvious that he was from the tribe of Levi. He was from the tribe of Aaron. And then it's explained that his wife was from the, from the tribe of Aaron. Why? Because they wanted us to know that these two people were from the Levitical lineage. And as these two people were from the Levitical lineage, something is really well connecting here. Now, what's connecting is that Number one, the two are old. The Bible didn't give us their specific age, but it said they were well stricken in age. Well stricken meant they were very old. They were old enough for Elizabeth to hide herself for five months when she fell pregnant because she was so ashamed, so embarrassed of people seeing a gogo, a very old woman carrying a baby. So she, she felt like it can't be because, probably, my own words, people can't know that at my age we're still doing it, we're still kicking it with Zechariah. It's embarrassing. And at the same time, I'm too old to carry a child. I'm wrinkled, I'm shriveled, I'm now um, grouchy, and um, I'm gone. I'm gone, so she hid herself. Because as God gives you the record-breaking grace, the grace is so much to an extent that you'll be embarrassed. The grace coming on you and me in this season will cause us to be embarrassed, to be embarrassed for ourselves because we're just going to look odd. There's a type of prophetic ministration that the church is used to. But the prophetic move coming now is so deep and multidimensional, it will cause you and I to be worried and to be ashamed. We feel odd, we feel out of place because the anointing is just too deep. It has never been seen before. The woman got a breakthrough that had never been seen since the days of Sarai, so she had to hide herself in shame. God is giving you a kind of a grace that's unmatched, that's unparalleled, a kind of grace that is so rare to be seen in your place of origin, in your family, in your city, to such an extent that it will be so difficult for you to testify. Because you may end up driving something that makes it look like you are a materialistic, object-oriented person. He will give you 
a house that may make it look like you are a materialistic person or that makes it look like it's not proper for a pastor, proper for a deacon or an elder. God is about to release an uncommon favor on your life that will make people question, is it God doing it? Or it is the working of magical powers or voodoo powers or an aid of ritualistic, demonological source of blessing and expansion. You know, we come in Africa. Africa is a, so much of a spiritual continent to an extent that when we're taken as slaves to USA, they called us spirituals. Because we're so spiritual, either in the dark world or in Christianity, Africa is a, is a spiritual, religious continent. And normally when something is out of normal, out of the norm, people will doubt that it's God. And if a church grows so fast, souls are saved so many, and the gifts of God are so deep, like we read in the Bible in the days of Peter, Paul, and Silas, people may end up thinking it's not God, it's the working of witchcraft. What God is about to do, it's, it's shattering all records. So I want you to remove blinkers from your mind, from your eyes, and to see things at a wide, from a wild, wide spectrum. Change your lenses to see things at a wide spectrum because what you are asking is so little compared to what God is about to do. You're asking God for the grace to heal the sick and you make you raise the dead. You're asking God for a house, he may make you build a city. You're asking God for a car, he may make you own a dealership. Because the grace for record breaking is a grace for you to stretch your faith to where your acclimatization or your sphere of normality he has never been able to depict and actualize. So going back to my text, I want to give you the pretext, the protext for you to understand the context from which I'm deriving the support for God's prophetic revelation over this season that records are about to be obliterated. The book says there was a man called Zechariah, Zechariah, which is an Aramaic and ancient Hebrew name, but also um, uh, uh, let me get the best word. It's a masculine, but they call it a theophoric, theophoric masculine name, which just literally means the Lord remembers. So it's theophoric because it's only demarcated to be masculine. It's a boy child name, Zechariah. And Zechariah, the Lord remembers is in the temple burning incense. And remember Revelation chapter 4, incense represents the prayers of the saints. So the priest, a priest is a person who is a hedge or a spokesperson or a sheriff of court between God and man. He is holding incense on the altar of incense, meaning he's carrying the prayers on the altar of prayers and God is about to respond because the priest's name is written God remembers. Ironically, he is a very old man who is childless and this very old childless man is married to a very old childless and barren woman who is past a monopause. They had forgotten about falling pregnant nursing children and having a baby. That chapter was closed. That deal was sealed 
we are done and out. He was then now just praising God and offering his service to God as a Levite. And I'm here to release an unadulterated word from Yahweh that somebody who is thinking now that his or her promise has gone to rest will be shocked in this season because if you walk in faith and obey God's laws, which are spiritual laws, the revelatory laws of the Bible, you are going to receive a shocker because Yahweh have a way. Mashiach, Hamashiach, is speaking through a human vessel that I'm about to do things that eye has not seen, ear has not heard. I'm about to go over and above, far by far and large, into a visitation of opening closed chapters in your life. There are chapters that you had closed and put to bed and you had decided to become comfortable and with the uncomfortable, which means or which is interpreted as a, a, a period or, or a place where you settle for mediocrity for the purposes of hiding, hiding yourself from a possibility of a heartbreak or a disappointed which comes by you overstretching your hope and your faith in God. But reopen this chapter, Zimbabwe. Reopen this chapter, bishop, apostle, pastor, sister, brother, because the Holy Spirit who hovered over the waters, over the deep, before illumination was called from darkness by God in Genesis 1, is speaking through me to say, hush, go back and reopen the MOU, the contract, the trust deed, which you had thrown away and say, I have failed and I'm settling for less. Don't settle for less because the grace now is not only the grace for breakthrough, but it's a grace of a gracious, outstretched, record-breaking miracle and testimony. This man is burning incense and is very old, and his name means God remembers, and God remembers him that day. In 2021, the Lord has set a date with you. It's a day of remembrance. He's remembering your gift. He's remembering your ministry. He's remembering your assignment and your calling. He's remembering your pain. He's remembering your abuse, your labor of love, your seed you sowed in faith, your tithe, your offering. The Lord, as he remembered Cornelius, that Cornelius, your prayers and your alms have been remembered by God. God is setting a memorial date for you in 2021 to remember you for a record-breaking miracle. Net-breaking, boat sinking like Peter's catch is your miracle. You are qualified to be a record-breaker, says the Lord. The Lord remembers is burning incense and an angel called Gabriel appears. He appears on the right side of the altar. And when he appeared on the right side of the altar, it meant the prayers on the altar had been heard by God. Now, as your prayers for 2020 have been heard by God for 2021, don't look at the left side, look at the right side. If you are going, if you are going, let me repeat myself loud and clear. If you are going to enjoy this heritage, if you are going to enjoy the record-breaking, miraculous answer to your prayer in 2021, stop looking on the left side. Switch your eyes to the right side. In other words, the Holy Spirit is saying through me now, that don't complain, don't grumble, and don't be offended by God because of the feeling or the notion that God did not answer your prayer. 
but rather rejoice, celebrate, thank him for the answers he brought without your prayer. Instead of questioning God for the things he didn't do in answering your prayer, the Lord wants you to praise God for the things he did without your prayer. I've preached. I've preached. If light goes off, I've preached. If, if internet shuts off, I have preached. You can go to bed pregnant with success, pregnant with a better tomorrow, pregnant with a date with the Lord himself. Do not be aggravated and do not be sedated, backsetted, or besetted by what God did not do in response to your prayer, but rather worship him by the things he did without you praying. Praise God now for the car that didn't roll over in an accident. Thank God now for the sickness that the doctor never diagnosed in your body. Thank God now for the death that you didn't suffer. Thank God now for the money you didn't lose. And thank God now for the air you breathed instead of grumbling and instead of complaining and getting bitter about what God did not do in response to your prayers. There is much more he did without your prayer than the things he didn't do when you prayed. So when your eyes are on the left side, are on the negative side of complaining, God will withhold his hand from you because he doesn't bless the complainer. He blesses the praiser. For you to be a record breaker this year, you have to switch from being a complainer into being a praiser. When you praise and thank him, he does exceedingly, abundantly, above what you ask, think, or imagine according to the power which, which worketh already inside you. He looked at the right side. He didn't look at the left side because Gabriel, the strong man, who stands in God's presence, the angel of information and publicity, who comes from God, will appear and is appearing on the right side of your prayer, not on the hinder side of your unanswered prayer. You have to switch and you have to change your mind, as painful as it may be, as grievous as it may be, as heart-wrenching and heart-tearing as it may be, the Lord is moved by faith, not complaints. So change your focus and defocus yourself from the negative. You lost so much, I know. No one will lose much more than I have lost personally, despite being God's high priest, who is pushing hard to maintain the pristine sanctity of the office. But yet I've learned through pain and by revelation as a result of the mandate and the mantle which sits upon my life, which gives me prophetic insight and apostolic intuition that God is not moved by complaint. God is moved by compliment. Compliment him for the prayers he answered and the things he did without prayer not the things he didn't do when you prayed. So God remembers Zachariah, looked at the right side. He did not look at the left side. And my eyes, Father, are on the right side. My eyes, Father, are on the sibling who survived. My eyes, Father, is where my mother went to, which is heaven, a place which herself and myself didn't deserve at all in the first place. My eyes are on where my late wife went to, a place which both herself and myself would never have gone there, gone to if a man, a human being, was to be our judge. So my eyes are praising him for the better place they are in, not God not instead of God not answering my prayers for them to be with me longer. As painful as it may be, switch your eyes from pain and look at the good thing that God did and yet you never even prayed for. Let your eyes be on the right side. Woman, your heart is too strong to be broken. 
Sir, your heart is too strong to be disappointed. Your focus is too, 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 too focused for you to be disappointed. Let's worship him for the two legs we still walk on. Let's worship him despite the hate, the gossip, despite being framed, being framed with evidence, despite being talked on and walked on, we're still standing. Don't focus on the negative, focus on the positive. There's a virus, pandemic virus, which is a wash out there. Probably somebody in your family died from that virus. But thank God, it didn't wipe out all of you. Doesn't it baffle you that you drank from the same cup? You washed the dishes that he ate from? Probably you shared the same blanket with her? You breathed the same air in the same room with him? Yes, God took him, but you remained. Let your eyes be on the positive. As painful, as heart-wrenching as it may be, I want you to rejoice when you're going through various trials for the tribulation of your faith produces patience. So let me move on now. God remembers was burning prayer, sending the, the aroma of prayer to heaven. Gabriel came and Gabriel said, that old man had been remembered and his wife who is old and stricken in age and barren is going to conceive. I love to take breaks when I'm reading the Bible, precept upon precept, line upon line. Elizabeth is a feminine or a feminine name which means God is my oath, which means God remembered his oath. Zechariah, God remembers. Elizabeth, God is my oath. It means God remembered his oath. Before I go to the oath that God remembers, ladies and gentlemen, your 2020 dream, your 2019, 2018 dream, your 10 year dream, vision, prophetic revelation, has been remembered because God is a God who keeps his oath. He is not a man that he should lie, nor son of man that he repent. Has he spoken and will not do it? Has he said one thing and wake up doing the opposite? No, he doesn't do that. He is faithful, faithful, dependable, faithful, trustworthy, faithful. He keeps his word and God is keeping his word over your life. So, God has kept his oath and had remembered it. And Zechariah is told that your wife will not only be pregnant, but that pregnancy, it breaks record now. Because the child will be the first child in human history to be filled with the Holy Spirit from its mother's womb. I'm not only giving you an Isaac equivalent, but that Isaac equivalent, when still held in the thintentious, thintentious tissue membranes of its mother's tummy, it will be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's a new record. It's a new thing that God has never shown you about you and your family that's coming. Preaching pastor, may not be business as usual, for he is coming to overtake you with a level of glory that probably your mother church had never experienced in decades or centuries because his mercy endures from generation to generation. You are a promotion, a generational promotion of God's fire and God's power. Thank you, Jesus, for setting a new record now. And the book says, you drink no wine, no strong drink. You be Nazarene. And um, you preach and prepare way for Christ. Then finally, 
His name shall be called John. You will name him John. And John means the Lord is gracious, which means Zechariah, husband to Elizabeth, parents to John. Zechariah, which means the Lord remembers. Elizabeth, which means an oath. The Lord remembers his oath. What oath will he remember? The oath of grace. The old ruled out family is about to receive a new world record of shifting the church from sacrifice and law to grace. John 1 verse 17, the law came with Moses, but grace and truth came with Jesus. How did Jesus bring grace and truth? He gave it as an oath. He remembered the oath, and that oath brought grace. Before John was born, salvation by Mosaic law was coming from killing a sheep, a goat, a red heifer, a bull, a turtle dove, or a pigeon. It was coming by shedding the blood of an animal, by giving a fat offering, a sin offering, or any other offering that could remit sin or cover sin on the outer or the brazen outer. Some say they call it that way because it was a brazen, it was made of bronze. But for the first time, salvation is no longer coming from the temple. Because a man who is dressed in camel's hair and who is eating wild honey and locusts alone for a living is in the wilderness preaching. As he's preaching, church members began to leave their well-built synagogues into a hot desert, a wilderness, a desolate place. People began to leave the well-built temple the expensive walls, the gate of beautiful, the east, west, northern, and southern gates, walking into the wilderness where there is no shed, where there is no shelter. Why? Because a record breaker is preaching. Preaching is no longer normal. The preaching they knew before was the preaching of the priests and the preaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes speaking at the Solomon's porch. But as for now, preaching has been taken outdoor for the first time since Solomon. And that preaching is in a wilderness and the priest is not wearing the priest's royal attire. Neither is he wearing nice linen. He is wearing not so expensive, not so attractive attires eating not so healthy food, probably healthy, but not expensive food. And the man is called John. And John means the Lord is gracious. The Lord has increased grace on your life. The grace is so much. The business deal may not need a five-star hotel, may not need a hotel lobby, neither may it need or require a fancy office to be signed. It can be signed by the roadside. It can be signed right in the, in the, in the, on the boot of a car, on the back seat of a car, on the passenger seat of a car. The Lord has increased his grace. He has been gracious to you. So before John, animal blood would bring, would would or could bring restitution. But now, restitution is not coming through a sacrifice. People are just simply saying, yes, I received the promise of the Messiah and are being baptized in water. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that's it. Salvation has come. I thought it, starts, it should start in the outer court, and my animal has to be inspected for three days. And when it qualifies, it has to be slaughtered on the brazen outer, banned, and I have to then enter into the inner court and sit by the Solomon's porch to be 
taught the word of God, to be taught about my sin, and I have to walk in the inner court to get revelation from the seven candlesticks, and from there I have to wait for the priest to enter into the table of shoe bread and the, uh, the, the, the altar of incense, and from the altar of incense into the holy place, and from the holy place I hear what God is saying, but now I don't need the holy place and the inner court to hear what God is saying. I just need to go to the wilderness and hear a man who is wearing camel's hair and eating wild locusts and wild honey and telling me only one simple word, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And by the dipping in water, by baptizo, dipping, immensing in water, salvation has arrived. It's easy. It's easy what God is doing in your life, brother, sister. It's easy. It's bloodless. It's sweatless. The Lord is gracious to you because he's graceful or he's gracious and merciful to whom he will be merciful and hardens him who he will harden. But as for you, there's no hardening. You have made it. Now, a record is broken, a record is set. And I have a challenge with Zechariah. My challenge with Zechariah is he starts arguing with the angel because he's doubting. And because his words may, create, may cause a miscarriage, he, the voice is taken from his mouth and he could no longer speak. I silence every voice trying to miscarry your breakthrough. I silence every mouth trying to cause a premature birth of your breakthrough. I shut the mouth that's contradicting with the prophetic word of God giving you a record-breaking, miraculous breakthrough this year. May no voice silence your Perez moment in Jesus' name. So it shall be silent because what you speak against, you are bought. What you speak for in faith, you receive. So for the child to last up to nine months, somebody had to be quietened. And I quieten that voice of unbelief in your mind. I silence that voice of doubt. You have been in pain so much and for so long, sister. You have grieved so much and for so long, brother. You no longer expect the good anymore, but may God silence the voice of unbelief. Jesus asked the father of the child in Matthew 17, do you believe I can do this? And he said, Lord, help my unbelief. And the child was free because now it's easy. And when it's easier, people don't believe because we believe if we do so much, God would then respond so little. But when he responds so much after we've done so little, it defies our logic and it defies our tradition and anything that violates tradition will be faced with hostility. But I pray. I've silenced every voice of unbelief. Without faith, it's impossible to make God happy. Father, I want to put a smile on your face by faith. And, oh Lord, silence even our own voices when you're trying to abort and miscarry the breakthrough, the Perez, before Perez breaks out of the mother's womb in Jesus' name. And God says, Amen. It shall be so. So I told you that, number one, don't look in the negatives. Don't fix your eyes on the negative, but look into the positive because the angel was on the right side, he wasn't on the left side. And he was burning incense, which means you must not stop praying if you're going to see your Perez moment, your record-breaking Perez, who will come when you keep burning incense. 
because Zechariah was old and childless. His wife was old and barren, but they did not stop serving God. He was busy burning incense. He was busy ushering other people's prayers to God. He was busy taking other people's supplications for and coming back with their answers and their miracles when his miracle seemed to have been forgotten. He continued. He pressed on. One secret with the supernatural realm is for you to break through against the demonic, you have to learn their culture. The culture of the demonic is first found in Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 to 12. Because a war broke out in heaven and Satan was thrown from heaven together with the third of God's angels. And the voice of the angel shouted from heaven and said, War to the inhabitants of the earth. Why? For the devil has been thrown down to you. What's the big fuss? That devil accused brethren day and night. Day and night means relentlessness, consistency. The devil is consistent. The Bible says in Judges chapter number 16 that Delilah kept on pressing on Samson until Samson gave her his secret. The secret wa wasn't given because she was pretty. The secret wasn't given because he was in love. The secret wasn't given because he was obsessed with her. The secret was given because she pressed day and night. The devil is relentless. Matthew chapter number 12 verse 43 says, when a demon is casted out of a man, he goes through many waterless places. But that's not the end of story. Looking for rest, finding none, he returns to his old house. And when he sees it well swept, clean, but empty, he brings seven spirits more wicked than itself, and the state of that person will be worse than before. It means when Satan is driven out, he works on a comeback, he works on a return. He's relentless. You have to keep that devil out, sister. Brother, you have to keep that devil at bay by continuing to burn incense despite you being barren, being financially barren, being breakthrough barren, being healing barren, being total deliverance barren. Barrenness means inability to produce. You may be unable to produce a marriage you may be unable to produce a relationship. You may be unable to produce a supernatural financial breakthrough. But persistence brings spiritual and supernatural results. You have to be persistent. Faith is continuing to believe when hope is against hope. The Bible says in John Romans chapter 4 from verse 17, it starts by comparing us and giving us Abraham as our, our measuring rod. And it says, like Abraham, who received righteousness by faith, because Abraham is a man who believed in God and it was credited to him as righteousness. For when his son was born, Abraham offered to him as a sacrifice. And in other words, he received his son from the dead because he considered him who had promised righteous. And he saw God as one who declares the end from the beginning, calling things which are not as though they do exist. And he considered God as a person who raises the dead, who raises a dead business, who raises a dead marriage, a dead relationship, a dead dating who restores a dead womb, who restores a dead manhood, who restores a dead health, health prognosis and diagnosis, calling things which are not there as though they already are, like me. He's already made me a multi-millionaire before I even became one by bank balance or by worth value. 
Yes, that's what I am. Because he calls things which don't exist as though they already are. Let me go deep down with this uh, uh, for you. The Bible then goes on to say, even when he was 100 years old and his wife was 90 and her womb was dead, he did not consider the deadness of his own body, neither did he consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. But against hope, he believed in hope. And he did not stagger between doubt and unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Are you strong in faith? For a record-breaking breakthrough. It's so big. It's so fictitious. Your eyes may will not believe what it's seeing. But like Zechariah, fear not Zechariah. I am coming from God. And your wife is about to break a record. God is with you. And I'm giving you his word. And I'm giving an impartation of God's grace. Because he's remembering you now and he's remembering his oath in your life and he's going to be gracious to you for the coming of your Messiah, which is your salvation. Any area of your life you need salvation, there is enough grace. He remembers his oath. T.O.G., you were founded in a bush. The Father remembers his oath. The Father remembers his oath. There's a record broken now. So for you to get into that position, you need to look into the positive side. You need to be in prayer. And number three, you need to be on fire for Jesus. Because for incense, to burn, there to be fire on incense. God does not answer prayers that are coming from a person who is not on fire. Incense will only re release its aroma, its sweet smell, when it's burned in fire. Have you lost your fire for Jesus? Have you lost for your fire? Are you now the one who only fasts when the f pastor calls for it? Or you are somebody who is fasting because it's now your routine ritual? Are you the one who prays because it's Sunday afternoon? Or the one who prays because he prays without ceasing. Because the Bible says when he left Zechariah, six months later, he went to Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man named Joseph, who was from the tribe of Judah. And he spoke to her for conception. Meaning the day he came to Mary, she wasn't on a periodic season. She was ovulating. And when a woman is ovulating, her temperature rises, which means Angel Gabriel waited six months until the month which this woman's hormones were really, really on their most balance. When this woman's fertility was on its most heat, and when the woman was on heat, when the woman was on fire, the angel came and said, you're about to carry the Lord. The Holy Spirit does not come upon, neither does he overshadow a person who is not on fire. You have to be on fire. Your temperature for God has to be continually rising. I told you about Paul when we spoke about the increase of fire that burns the serpent, that burns the viper. Now I'm telling you, men and women, you need to be on fire for Jesus. You need to stop complaining and praise him through pain. Praise him through death. Praise him through affliction. And you will become the right candidate. Record-breaking Perez moment. It's for you. And it has already begun. There's a debt set for you by Yahweh to break a record for your life. So, thank you, Jesus. Seth broke Abel's record because when Abel 
started his ministry. He raised an altar and he knew how to give, he knew how to pray, and he knew how to get God to answer. But he died prematurely. Seth replaced him and he lived for hundreds of years. He broke the record. Later on, there came a man called Enoch who broke the record of Adam because Adam wasn't righteous enough to start in eternity and end there. Adam is the first man in the world, together with his wife Eve, to start life in eternity and ends it in mortality. How do you start as an immortal and end as a mortal? That was gross failure from our ancestor. But thank God there came Enoch, who started in mortality and ended his life in immortality. He never tested death and was raptured by God with his flesh and blood. He broke Adam's record. And then they come a man called Methuselah. He doesn't speak in tongues, he doesn't give great prophecies, but he lives the longest, 969 years. He broke the record. He broke the record and you're going to break the record. I don't care you have HIV, I don't care you have cancer, you have diabetes, God still gives life or gives healing. Either he can give you 50 more years with a virus, with a cell, with a bacteria still in your blood, or he can heal you now. You will break the record. You will live like Methuselah. You will break the record. And there came Noah. God saves him with his whole family when the whole world is being destroyed. Building a Titanic in the medieval age, before the bronze age, before the iron age, the man was able to raise a yacht. A yacht, yes, a supersized yacht. A titanic, gigantic marine boat. He broke the record by building an infrastructure way hundreds and thousands of years ahead of his generation. He broke the record. He brought technology way before his time. He was a record breaker. And there come Abraham, our father of faith. He broke the record by being 100 years old, his wife being 90. And yet, a 90-year-old baron and a 100-year-old man, they broke the, bar the record of fertility. They broke the, bar the record of, of, of monopause and the record of dead urology, dead prostate. They broke the record. You may seem like you are now seedless and unproductive in your business, in your family, in your, in your marriage, in church, in your spiritual duties, in your calling, but hear me. Don't be confused by people who are reminding you of your age. Sister, when they say, I order you, say, I'm 35 shouting. I'm going to get married, I'm going to have children, because the grace is just too much. It's just meant to break records, that's all. That's all. As if it was enough, Isaac came and broke record. He sowed seed in Genesis 26, and in the same year he sowed seed, he harvested a hundredfold. You are the record breaker. You are the record breaker. You are sowing seed and you are harvesting a hundredfold in this year, says the Lord. Jacob broke record. He broke record after stealing, after tricking his brother, after lying to his father. He went to sleep and saw the Lord with a ladder, angels ascending and descending. I don't care about the worst mistake you have done in your life. I don't care about the worst decision you have ever made in your life. What I brought to you today is that you are breaking record. The Lord is visiting you right at the very center of your weakness. I'm not encouraging you to be weak. I'm encouraging you to believe again. Because through your weakness, God can make you strong by appearing to you while you are asleep. While well, you are switched off, yet terror is looking for you, haunting you, hunting you down in the person of Esau. You can still make it. He broke the record. 
And Joseph broke the record. He got a promise from the father, but didn't need to trick like his father. He got it without trickery. He broke the record. He broke it without taking Potiphar's wife. He broke the record. And you are breaking the record. You are breaking that record of sin. That record of, of the edge to sleep with five women in the same day. That record that runs through the veins of your family line. That family serpent record of addictions. You are breaking through the cage because there is Joseph who said, I will receive it without cutting corners. Yes, you are receiving it without cutting corners. You are breaking the record. I'll give you another example of a great record breaker. The name of that record breaker was called Daniel. Because prior to his existence, Samson had fought a lion and killed it. But Daniel said, oh no, I don't need muscles and extra supernatural strength to kill lions. I now want to break a record. I'll turn them vegetarian. He turned lions vegetarian. But only for a moment. To turn them again into predators, carnivores, when his enemies were being thrown into the pit. May your enemies be devoured before they even touch the ground by the same lions that spared you when they, are the, they were the most hungry. Your lions are turning vegetarian. You may have been thrown in this den, but hear you me. They are not going to test your flesh. They will test the flesh of those who threw you in it. Witchcraft beware. Sorcery beware. We are breaking records. We are saying that big occultic witch feared and revered. We don't fear you. You outer. We don't fear you. We break records now. I don't care which case they say runs through your family. It is broken in the name of Jesus. Who said you won't make money? Who said you die poor? Who said you die so stigmatized, marginalized, and living a limited life? I release a limitation breaking power. Perez, Perez, Perez on you. You are breaking the record. You are breaking the record. You're breaking the record. Listen, somebody. Elijah caught fire from heaven and fire consumed the sacrifice. So Elijah, he has a God who answers by fire. But here come three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They say, now we walk into the fire. They broke a record. They walked into the fire, and the consuming fire joined them. Somebody called fire down in church and power manifested, but you are not going to do that. You and I were going an extra mile, man of God, woman of God. We are calling the consuming fire himself. And we are walking through the fire itself. Psalm 66 verse 9, O oh Lord, you have, you, have, you have tried us like silver is tried. You have made us to go through the fire. The water, the thorns, the stones, and the briars. But now you have set us on a wealthy place. You have set us on a wealthy place. You have set us on a wealthy place. Wealthy place for you. Because like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the fire of COVID-19, the fire of sickness and disease, the fire of having no proper health care in your country, the fire of limited financial resources, the fire of starting your life at a disadvantage because of faulty foundations is not going to ban you. You're breaking the record. And here comes another record breaker. There are so many, but I'll just give you a few. His name is David. He breaks the record because this man called David He's anointed in a bush, but his predecessor is anointed on the top, on the, on the rooftop. The predecessor is anointed on the rooftop. He's anointed from a bush, but look at what happens. The one anointed on the rooftop has had his kingdom lasting only for 40 years. Yet the one anointed in the bush had his kingdom lasting forever. You may have started in the bush like T.O.G., but you are going ahead of, your, of the people you admire. 
of your predecessors. You are breaking record in Jesus' name. You're breaking record. You're breaking record like Solomon. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Solomon married a thousand women. It's, it's something, something. But I want you to see something here. Never mind my glasses. We're about to close. I want you to see something here. Go with me to the book of First Kings chapter number 4. And I want us to go on verse 32. For you to break record, I told you, you need to speak the right words. I told you, you need to focus on the good things that God did for you. Not the prayers you claim were unanswered. Because God does not answer a complainer, he answers a praiser. Job 13 verse 15, though you have slain me, yet will I praise you. He lost 10 children in one day. He lost all wealth on one day. He was controlling the stock market of the Middle East, but his whole empire crunched, crunched in one day. His wife wanted him to die the same day. The following day, he was a leaper, and his friends were mocking him. The man was drowning in trouble. But he said, naked I came, naked I will return. Praised be the name of the Lord. He praised God. God admires praise. He's attracted to praise. And praise makes God do wonders. Now listen to this. He spoke 3,000 proverbs and his songs numbered 1,005. He spoke about plant life from the cedar of Lebanon to the hyssop that grows out of walls. He also spoke about animals and birds, reptiles and fish from all nations. People came to listen to Solomon's wisdom sent by all the kings of the world who had heard of his wisdom. Solomon became the richest man to ever live on earth and became the wisest man to ever walk on earth because he wrote over a thousand songs for God. He wrote over a thousand praise songs. That's something. A man with a thousand wives and thousands of children is bearing children or is bearing a wife every year. A man with a thousand wives and thousands of children needs a lofty budget, is killing beasts every day. But this man never failed to support his family of thousands. Because he had understood that though I have a weakness that's bigger than my father's, I can still break record if I can praise God. His father wrote minimum 150 songs and he wrote over a thousand. Can you do yourself a favor, ma'am? I know you are stressed. I know you are depressed. I know things are not working out. May you please start writing songs for God from tonight. I'm not saying write songs and sell to a, to a singer. Sing them yourself. Write songs for Jehovah. Sing a new song unto the Lord and sing even in tongues. I'm giving you a weapon, a secret weapon, brother. You hear that your car has been stolen. Start dancing. Start dancing. Confuse the enemy. Start dancing. You hear that your your card has been, your account has been cloned and all money has been wired from your account. You begin to dance. You begin to praise. Because when you learn to write songs for God, to dance and to praise, my brother, no weapon formed against you can prosper. Break the record. Zechariah and his wife were righteous and they feared God. Luke once said it. But they, child, they were childless and the wife was barren. Being in trouble doesn't mean you have angered God. Job was righteous, he stood evil and walked uprightly, but yet his life was ransacked for nine months. Brother and sister, you may be in the right reputation, it doesn't mean bad things won't happen to good people. But when bad things happen to good people, don't be offended by God. Praise him. Matthew chapter number 11. And John, whilst he was in prison, sent emissaries to Jesus. And the envoy said, John had sent, us to, he had sent us to ask you, are you the Messiah or should we wait for another one? Hold on. Before you regained your cognitive ability, right in your mother's womb, 
you called me the Messiah when I was in Mary's womb. Now, after being educated and over 30 years of age, and you are now intellectually cognitive, you then ask me and question my being the Messiah? Human beings are crazy, eh? But here Jesus answer. He said, go and tell John that the blind see, the lame walk, the deaf hear, the lepers are cleansed, the sick are healed, demons are casted out, the gospel is being preached to the poor, and the dead are being raised from the dead. Then he said, blessed is he who find no offense in the Son of Man. Are you offended by God? You know, when I go to heaven, there are questions I want to ask G.O.D. I have questions, sister. I have questions, brother. I have so many questions that I want to ask him. I want to ask the big man. I want to ask my Lord. Jehovah, can you please explain? I'm a man who can be hurt. But I've learned in all my pain that God is wiser than the wisest. Where wisdom outstretches, his wisdom begins. And in his universal and in his sovereign will, his universal dominion and his sovereign will, he makes decisions that we sometimes may not understand. But as painful as it may be, we must continue to give him all the praise and to bless him. To bless him eating salsa and dry vegetables. Bless him eating, taking tea and bambaira. We should bless him. He wrote over a thousand songs. Just as Zechariah continued ministering before God, despite the reproach. Are you, where is the man of God? He's burning incense. What is incense? Our prayers. Is God answering those prayers? Yes. Has he answered the prayers of him? No. What does his name mean? God remembers. Why is God not remembering him? We don't understand. What's his wife's name? The Lord is my oath. God promised that the barren will conceive in Isaiah 54. So which oath is God going to fulfill in her life? when the most vital oath in a woman is not being fulfilled. Because you'll be gracious. How will he be gracious? You'll be gracious because he has silenced the mouth of my enemy. And he says, that day John shall be born. You shall call him John. Meaning, you can't speak from now until the time you're able to name your situation. Zechariah only gained back his speech when he was able to rightfully name his situation. Rename your situation. Rename it now and give him all the praise and give him all the glory because you are breaking records. You're breaking records. In Exodus 32, Moses is up the mountain, people go impatient, and they build a calf of gold and silver and begin to worship it. And guess who led to the first idolatry ever recorded in the Israelites' camp? It was Aaron, and with Aaron, Aaron was later to be anointed as the high priest in Leviticus 22. So the man who builds the first idol, who leads the first rebellion against God, builds an idol, leads people astray. But God says to him, through Moses, anoint him on the tip of his right ear or, and on his right thumb and his right toe to be the high priest of my people, and his son shall take from his stead, and the priesthood line shall not depart from his lineage. Doesn't it worry you that God anointed the first high priest, being the same man who introduced idolatry in Israel, so that he shows every priest in Israel that it is by grace. When every priest shall burn the sacrifice, and burn the incense 
and goes with the sin of Israel in the holy place, there will be no room for pride and arrogance. There will be no room for being judgmental because they will be reminded that your first forefather, the first high priest, led Israel to the first idolatry. But when that happened, on chapter 32, on verse 28, 3,000 people died as a result and as a consequence. But then came Peter to break that record. That the first high priest of the Old Testament led to the death of 3,000 people. Peter then denies Jesus three times. Who is Peter? On this rock, I'll build the foundation of my church, and the powers of hell will not prevail against him, and I'll give him the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now, the man who should be given the keys of the kingdom of God, and the man on whom the church will be built, him being the foundation, according to his revelation, denies Christ three times. Why? So that there is no boasting in his presence. Nobody who come and say, I am righteous, I am holy. Israel, you crucified my master. You are sinners, you don't deserve it, I'm going to Africa. No. You sin three times in one night right in my face so that you understand this is by grace. Peter receives the Holy Spirit 53 days later. He preaches his first sermon and 3,000 are saved. When Aaron fell, 3,000 died. When Peter fell, 3,000 were saved. 3,000 because every time he denied Christ, 1,000 souls were saved by grace, not by his own prowess. So grace to you to break the record. Grace to you to break the record. Moses is the first man of God to commit murder. But yet he wrote the five books of the New Te Old Testament called the Torah, or called the, the first five books, the Torah, yes. Then came Paul. Paul became, became the first New Testament man of God to be a murderer, come pro apostle. He is like the Moses of the New Testament. But the old Moses only wrote five books and wrote the law which was the law of the testament of death. But Paul wrote not five books, but 14. And he didn't write the laws, thou shalt not. He wrote the law of grace and life. The new law, the new testament. Because Paul was coming to break the record of Moses. May you break your grandfather's record. May you break your father's record. May you break your mother's record. May you break your sibling's record. May you break your societal record. May you break your city record. May you break your nation's record. In the name of Jesus, welcome to the year of Perez. Break the record as Jesus broke all records. He broke the records and you are his son. You are breaking all records. Them that believe in me, greater works they shall do than I did. You are meant to break record. Father, I receive and impart the anointing that multiplies bread and fish. No one will hunger and thirst in the name of Jesus. And I receive and impart the anointing that turns water to wine. No one will be limited by insufficiency in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I impart the anointing of supernatural financial breakthrough. As my Lord took money from the mouth of the fish, so may they be a miracle phone call for that job, a miracle phone call for that seed, a miracle phone call for that harvest, a miracle phone call for that breakthrough, and common favor to you. Perez, breakthrough, breakthrough, and breakthrough. God bless you. Don't forget that we are on lockdown, but the church will never be locked down. The church of God is still holding services, and you'll be seeing me from this studio. Remember, I called for partners for ABJ TV. 
It is painful, it's strainers. We need a minimum 10,000 USD per month to keep streaming on satellite. So our PayPal account is as written below. Send your seed and specify that it is partnership for ABJ TV so that we raise a thousand partners this year. Be one of them. Help me get this power message, prophetic message out to South America, to Asia, to Middle East, to Australia, and for every soul born again, every soul encouraged, every soul educated in the ordinances of God, every soul baptized in the Spirit, you are adding in your heavenly account, and you receive a hundredfold in this life and in the life to come. Don't forget to tithe. Don't forget to give your offering. Don't forget we are still paying bills in U.S. dollars. We are still building God's temple in opposite and Richard along Blue Air Road, just after Belvedere. I love God with a passion, and I believe you have the same passion to serve him sacrificially. I love you, and Perez, you are the, the record breaker and the new record setter. Amen. <laughs>